gentlemen, we were judging um, oral presentations and a gentleman uh, provided us with a presentation of, he'd looked at around 120 uh, cases of sexually acquired uh, reactive arthritis or SARA or writers as you may, some of you may call it still. And um, to, my, to my horror, um, after he'd presented, while he was presenting his data, um, I asked him whether they'd um, looked at or done an STI screening in any of their cases, and the answer was no. And I just realized the amount of effort that this gentleman had put into his work uh, had, was all, you know, amounted to nothing. And so this idea of, so was conceived then. And what we did was um, in July this year, we sent off um, a survey, a mentoring survey, which I'm going to talk about and um, talk a little bit more about what the outcome of this survey was. So the aim of this session is to look and explore the ASICON community mentoring program. I've already mentioned the consultation exercise and to equip all of you who are sitting here with the, the necessary knowledge, skill, and attitudes to be able to fulfill the mental role, because ideally, mentors need training as well. It's not just mentees, but ment mentoring, whoever wants to be a mentor should be trained up as well, and basically to, to guide the, the mentees the best way possible. So what is, def what is mentoring? I don't want to be patronizing, but where a mentor is really a highly regarded person, who guides another individual in the development of his or own ideas. And this is a, uh, a definition that we use in the UK uh, for post-grad uh, education. So you'll say, but I already do it. What's, what's different about this? It's not coaching. I'm not asking you to be a role model. It's an ongoing relationship which, which informs and you meet up with this person and you focus on various issues. It's, it can be career, it can be personal, and you provide support and guidance to them while you're mentoring them. So really, there are no developmental goals as such. So, so in the mentoring survey that we sent, that I've just put them together because of, otherwise there'd be too many slides, we had about 130 responses, and, which was around 25 to 30% of the people that we'd sent the uh, survey to responded. And I need the thing again. Where is my... Anyway, what is your age? If you look at the... You can see that there was a good spread of people ranging from 20 to 60. I need the pointer, please, whoever is here. And when I asked you, it was your organization public or private, you know, there was, again, a fair spread. Um, a lot of you, about nearly 70, which is around 60% of you were... Um, in the public domain, and a fair number of you worked for private organizations only. Most of you were uh, fully employed. You can see here, you were working full-time, you were fully employed, and you, your current occupation was described here, and you can see there was a lot of experience, people who responded to this survey. So this was really, really heartening because I realized there was already a huge uh, body of experience and wisdom that we could harness and use for the program. So moving on to, when I asked them, do you have access to an educational supervisor? I can imagine, obviously, a senior doctor wouldn't need an educational supervisor. So of the people who answered, 90 of them answered. So nearly half of them said, um, yes, okay? And this is a map of all the responses that I had, including the, from the international faculty, the US, UK, France, whatever, or Indonesia. This is a spread of the responses that I have had per state, okay? I've mapped it, and you can see Maharashtra did the best, you know, so response. So I just want you to keep that at the back of your mind. So who is a mentor? A mentor is really an experienced clinician. I've said minimum of five years experience, can be less, can be more. That's for the training committee to ascertain. An enthusiastic person who's approachable, who's willing to guide. And because at the end of the day, it's a voluntary process and you're self-nominating yourself to be a mentor. But as I said, you do need relevant training and expertise. And when I asked you, did you have any experience of mentoring? Look at that. 97 out of 129 said, yes, they have had experience of mentoring. So 
Would you be interested in formally mentoring a junior colleague? And look at the response. 110 out of 128 said, yes, they would be um, want to, and you know, no, only 18 of you said, no, they didn't want to have anything to, to do with the mentoring. If yes, who would you wish to mentor? And, and that really gives you an idea that it's not just doctors, it's multidisciplinary, we are a part of a multidisciplinary team. Look at that pharmacist, specialist nurse, voluntary team member. Obviously, junior doctor is the most appropriate. Medical student even. You are willing to mentor them as well. And I intentionally put this slide off because if no, why not? Look at that. It said constraints of time, but no one put down just not interested. So basically that said everybody was interested in the scheme. So. What does a mentor do? I mean, what's the role of the mentor? It's to encourage their mentees to progress through reflection on their own goals, their own skills, their own knowledge, as opposed to simply providing them with advice. And what is important is that this should not be a power relationship with the mentee. No egos need to come into this. There should not be the potential for the mentor to directly impact on the men mentee's career. So, so it is just a pastoral role, okay? It's not a power role. And this is a model that we use in Leicester, which is the mentor-mentee model, basically asking the mentee, what's going on? What's the present state of affairs? What solutions do you need? What makes sense to you? What do you need to do? And how do you implement it, okay? So my mentor, as I say to my colleagues in, in Leicester, is should be professional, caring, good communicator, diplomatic, intentionally put there, and supportive. The rest are add-ons, but those are probably the imperatives that I would require from a mentor. Any experience of being a mentee when, I, when this question was asked? And yes, 83 of you said, yes, they had been um, a mentee sometime in, your, in their lives. And has there been an occasion in your career when you would have benefited from a mentor? And if yes, did it relate all of these issues and look at that training issues and career advice came out tops but there was bullying harassment personal problems health which did figure in the responses as well the question was asked how long do you think the scheme should be and you can see we had a fair spread of answers some people but majority saying throughout their programs so obviously if they're junior doctors they're trainees they probably want to this mentorship to be during their entire program so gives you an idea about um, how long uh, this should be when I asked them how do you think your role as a mentor should be formally assessed and there was a mixture some saying use, using a feedback form but most of them felt that some, there should be feedback tailored within the scheme. So, you know, whether it's a form, whether it is, you know, unlinked, linked, um, but only a small proportion said that they did not think a feedback was necessary. Again, forget this, I think we've already talked about this. Who can be a mentee? Any part of participant who is training in HIV. Personally, for me, that's how it is could be an ASICON member or a participant, and it's related to their career. So what do mentees want? Patients, personal support, advice, accessibility, confidentiality, extremely important, feedback, respect, empathy, important attributes that what our mentees tell us that they look for in a relationship. Now, again, look at that. Fair spread here. What kind of things would you like your mentor to assist? When I ask the mentees, structured training, information regarding educational resources, help with courses, best time and place to do specialist training, and the most important being how best to work with colleagues, communication skills. Um, again, I think we've done that. So the aim of the scheme is, scheme is for the senior clinician to help support the doctor or the part of the MDT to enable uh, to manage their personal challenges more effectively, to help support their development, and to facilitate career decision making. That's what I derived from the survey. What the scheme is not about, 
formal supervision. It's not about formal supervision. It's not about formal monitoring. It's not about assessment. It's not form filling. It's not tick boxes. And it is not detailed support. The, the trainee will have their educational supervisor to do that. I thought just to get a feed, feedback of what was happening currently on the ground, I asked this questions, are your interactions with other members of your department positive, negative, neither, or negative? And you can see a lot of them were happy, uh, were at a happy place, extremely positive, moderately positive, but there was around 30% of individuals who uh, would, were not happy at the place that they were currently. When asked about civility or the expectation of civility in their department, again, the answers were quite forthcoming. And you can see they had realistic, very realistic expectations of civility in their organization. And when I asked how did the organization consider their individual needs, and you can see moderately well, and there were only a small proportion of people who didn't think that they were being treated rightly in the organization. How responsive have they been to your questions or concerns? You can see again, very responsive, 35 out of 92, that are, uh, so nearly 40%. 40, 40 but then there was again another 30% of people who probably were hedging their bets. In the last 12 months, how often did your senior colleagues give you the information or help you needed? And you can see there was a lot of sometimes, but usually, the senior colleagues had been quite uh, responsive to their needs. So it's for the mentee to set ground rules. It's up to the mentee to decide what they, decide, what they discuss with their uh, mentor. They may cover personal problems. They may cover professional problems. It's for them to set a time for their meeting. It's for them to set up the duration of the relationship and what they need to discuss at those meetings. So we are hoping to develop a robust protocol for matching which will be in place. Mentees will be given a choice of possible mentors. They may not get the particular mentor that they want and if, if the mentor is available then there's no problem about that but that, that's not a guaranteed. The timing of sessions should, will be mutually agreed between the mentor and the mentee and additional meetings can be requested between the mentor and the mentee once the scheme gets cracking. What's the frequency of meetings we'd expect you to do? Three times per year, we believe, is adequate. And the number of mentees in total will vary between what the mentor wants to take, because there is always a possibility for mentor has, had, has more than one mentee, then it allows peer-to-peer -peer buddying. So, you know, it's a good way of doing things. And where you meet is up to the mentee. There is no constraints about what type of meeting. Does it have to be face-to-face? -face? Do I have to book it in advance? It can be done email, telephone consultations, FaceTime, Skype, it's all there. And I asked you, which of the following electronic devices do you use? And you can look at that. 100 and out of 126 here, responses, 114 of you have a laptop computer, in addition to all the gizmos and, and technology, which is quite widespread here, okay? But mo majority of you had a laptop computer. Would you, men I asked, would you wish your mentee to be locally placed or would, they, you, would you prefer him to be um, at a distance? And you really had no preference, either locally or at a distance. So mentoring meetings can be held through any number of media in addition to face-to-face, -to -face, as I've already said, and that eliminates geographical barriers to be overcome. So the recommendations for mentoring for, for that I'm putting forward for ASICON is based on the results of our survey in combination with the, the wisdom that is around, uh, we would follow the recommendations, present an action list, detail what would facilitate um, mentoring, availability I've already said, we, how we will do it, a code of conduct, absolute confidentiality is paramount in the relationship both mentor and mentee will sign a mentoring agreement agreeing to this. Anonymized feedback will be sought from mentees to enable ongoing development and monitor the scheme as well. A mentoring scheme le lead with overarching responsibility for running the scheme and a further point of contact for mentees and mentors will be decided by the ASICON training committee. The trainees will have to be proactive, engage in the process, they have to act professionally and help in implementing the scheme. And finally, a mentoring scheme can be really rewarding and 
this is just something that you have an opportunity to influence the next generation of doctors by acting as excellent role models. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that was an incredible initiative, and, and I think there's a lot of information there to take on further. So um, maybe we'll go to the next.